Hello boys and girls, we're going to do some reading today and we're in week three, a new language invented by kids. And if you could please go to page 330, please. Okay, prepare to read a new language invented by kids. Notice and note three big questions. Genre study. Narrative nonfiction gives factual information by telling a true story. Authors of narrative nonfiction may organize their ideas using headings and subheadings. Texts about events that happened in the past include real people and may include how they felt about events. Authors of narrative nonfiction may present their ideas in sequential or chronological order. Okay, boys and girls. So, a genre, the, the story that we're going to read today, boys and girls, about its narrative nonfiction. And if you remember, boys and girls, nonfiction, non means no, not fiction, not fake, so real. So it's a real story, but it's a narrative real story. And it, it's their their opinion, their ideas. Okay, They organize their ideas, and they're using headings and subheadings. And it's about real people and about how they felt about those events. So again, boys and girls, the genre for today is narrative nonfiction. We have a set of purpose here. It says, think about the title and genre of this text. What do you know about how people who are hearing impaired communicate? What do you want to learn? Write your ideas below. And again, boys and girls, once you type your sentences here, remember you're using .hub and submit to your Google Drive. All right, so the first question, boys and girls, is what do you know about how people who are learning and are hearing impaired communicate? So what do you know, boys and girls? What do you know about the people that cannot hear? You know, what do you know about them? And how do they communicate? And what do you want to know? What do you want to learn, boys and girls? We have critical vocabulary. We have astonishment. If you look at something with astonishment, you feel very surprised by it. Penny had a look of astonishment when she saw what was inside the box. Astonishment, boys and girls, is when you're surprised. Gestures. If you make gestures, you make movements with your hands or arms to share a message. As my teacher talks, she makes a lot of gestures with her hands. So it's movement, boys and girls, you do with your hands or your arms, but you do it with a purpose to share a message. Okay, boys and girls, the word gestures, we also saw it in last week's um, social studies lessons about the history of communication. And I know that one part was like facial expressions and gestures. And we saw some um, internet clips about that. Okay, next one, boys and girls, is linguistics. Linguistics are people, linguists, linguists are people who study languages and the way they are put together. My aunt and her co-workers are linguists who speak and study many languages. So again, boys and girls, the word is linguists, are people who study languages. Cool. Instinct. An instinct is something you do or know naturally without being taught. Most animals, including humans, are born with the instinct to do whatever is necessary to survive, such as eating. Here's some, build some, build some background knowledge, boys and girls, about sign language. This boy is using American Sign Language to say thank you. Sign language is a series of signs. Um, sign language is a series of signs that people make using their hands, facial expressions, and body movements. People who are deaf or hard of hearing use it to communicate. Sign language has some features of spoken language, rules for how to pronounce words, word order, and grammar. In English, if you show, in English, you show you are asking a question by raising your voice at the end of the sentence. In sign language, you raise your eyebrows, open your eyes wide, and lean your body forward. American Sign Language, boys and girls. And here's some 
some visuals. This is um, the alphabet, how to do the alphabet with sign language. And here are some simple words, boys and girls. They you, you grab, you put your hand and you move it back and forth in front of your lips. That means you want food or you want to eat. Bathroom, we use this one in class. It's your index finger and your middle finger. And you shake it back and forth. That means like a restroom, bathroom. More boys and girls, you have your palm up. This hand has the thumb facing up. It's like a fist, but your thumb is up. And you go up. That means you want more. Finished. Your hands start here, and you move them both this way. That means you're finished. More. You bring your little fingers together at the same time, and you, you hit them a little bit right here. You touch them. That means more. Play, boys and girls. And this is the movement for play. This American Sign Language for play, boys and girls. Okay. So let's go to the next page, please. We're going to page, um, we're going to page 331, boys and girls, 331, please. Okay. And that this is the cover page for the story of the week, a new language invented by kids by Sharnan Simon. Okay. We see a young girl here, boys and girls, and she's doing hand gestures, but it, it is the American Sign Language. All right. Thank you, boys and girls.